thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, Dumes and I are here to present this work, uh, and we developed it with uh, Pedro Meda and Mohamed Kassan. Unfortunately, Pedro is not here to present to you. Hello, Pedro. <laughs> uh, uh, the main point here is, is present that uh, process-based framework we did based uh, on that new report and that new initiatives that is uh, digital building logbooks. And DBOL, that's uh, the nickname, uh, it's a common repository to, 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 to provide and to, to, to acquire all the relevant building data and uh, that should be machine readable, interoperable, and that is the main challenge we will face here. Yes, and this is a super new concept as it was more or less formalized. Yes, uh, it is a super new concept as it was for more or less formalized in uh, the beginning of 2021 by the European Union in this report that we present there. So you can find this on Google. And of course, uh, uh, we represent this in a micro vision with not so detailed, and you can see it's a lot of process there. And this is a kind of a Portuguese based uh, vision because if you uh, are aware that will be many of requirements uh, based on the countries, and we, it is a, a slight vision from the Portuguese point of view. All right. And. Uh, as we are here in the digital uh, twin uh, section, uh, I had to say that uh, there is no digital twin without uh, digital data. And the digital building logbooks will be the repository to provide that digital data for digital twins. And we have been working on this and connecting data templates, material passports, and digital uh, building logbooks uh, to sensor construction sites and smart buildings that will provide the digital data for the digital things. As well, Dimas is working with DBOL in blockchain. Yes, uh, so in essence, uh, when we are talking about this common data environment that uh, the DBL can be, we more or less gather and facilitate and work on data from all life cycle phases of the respective building. This means uh, data from the beginning, like uh, you know, um, municipal data and land registry data and other those types of you know initial static data. But also, as we move forward, we have use phase data, uh, sorry, construction phase data, and also operation and maintenance phase data, and so on and so forth. And this is where also digital twins come into play when we are talking about the operation and maintenance. Uh, there are many conceptual ways to run a digital building logbook and to gather all this kind of data. Blockchain is one of those ways, but we'll talk about uh, more about this later. And of course, uh, all that initiatives that are targeting sustainability will be inside and uh, be very connect with the digital building logbooks. And right. So when it comes to the key characteristics uh, of uh, a DBL, um, it should be supported by data that is digital, interoperable, and traceable, exactly because we are talking about a common data environment and also we are talking about several interfaces between different types of data that should be interchangeable. So there should be a permeable, a permeable membrane, so to speak, between those two. And it should support several phases of the life cycle of the building, ideally all of those phases. And it needs to be an information receiver, as we said before, even from digital twins, but also from BIM, even land registry. And it should work as an enabler for digital twins themselves. So digital twins can support a DPL with their data, but also DPL can support digital twins as it can provide the bedrock data on, on top of which a digital twin can be built. And talk about the life cycle, we discuss uh, quite a lot about the stage, how to deliver the, the process, and we come up with uh, a small piece of this and just to combine this in three stages. Uh, the uh, stage strategic definition, early to design and construction, after design and construction, and in the use phase. And also we bring some innovation and the notation because uh, as i said before we we realize this in the uh, portuguese reality and we have a lot of manual data in this process and we are targeted has to be uh, to the next uh, years 
uh, of the decentralization of the municipality and the, the, the process uh, inside the, the countries. Also, we target to, to, to identify the stakeholders that will be connected with this, this data, and this is something we are uh, thinking to work in the future, uh, connecting this with HDI and uh, know more about the data and how the people will provide and use that data. And this should be really important because when it comes to the sharing of data in a common data environment, this data does not just exist in a vacuum, but is rather created, organized, used and shared by different stakeholders. As such, the stakeholders should be incentivized to both share and also use the data that can go into a digital building logbook, whatever this data might be, Excel spreadsheets, uh, B models, whatever. So it is important to identify those stakeholders and I also identified what the needs are and what they would like also to uh, be compensated for, for example, when they are sharing their data. And the report uh, about DBOL identified many of uh, initiatives, local initiatives, and that is the main challenge, to connect these initiatives to the, that uh, common data environment. And some of them are mandatory, some not, and that will be, in the future, I think, the DBOL will be mandatory in Europe. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, part of European directive, and uh, while the timeline is a little bit hazy at this point, we can expect that over the next decade, things will become mandatory when it comes to DBLs. And also in that report, they identified uh, a lot of functionalities that will be present in the DBOL, as well as the main database, and we should uh, uh, think about uh, the DBOL as the, the, the way to aggregate data and to be uh, able to, to, to enable interoperability and share this data to be used in, in multiple phases, in construction phase, and the, for the real estate, for the tenants, and that is the, the key element of uh, structuring a uh, DBOL. Well. Uh, we start with this, this is a strategic uh, definition uh, stage, uh, where we have this, uh, we are saying about the land uh, and uh, that requirements, as uh, we said before, for example, in Portugal, we have some governing database we should integrate in the, uh, in the digital building logbooks and, uh, and some European initiatives as well. And you should figure out a way to, to think that database, that digital uh, logbook database has many layers that will be connected with this, uh, we saw before, that data sets and we will have this uh, providing knowledge in that layers and concerning administrative information, and construction data information, in use, energy, and risk safe assessment, and, and among others. And those layers of data are not a given. So we have conceptualized those layers here, but depending on the stakeholders and maybe the contractual structure itself, these layers of data might be organized otherwise. Which means that there's not a fixed template for a digital building logbook, and there's also not a fixed, obviously, I mean, it's still conceptual, but it's, there's also not a fixed requirement for the type, amount, and sets of data that a, a DBL should require. Although, considering that it should be some kind of a common, inter, a common environment for all kinds of data, we should consider that all could get into there, which also creates certain demands for APIs in between the different systems that you know, kind of uh, work with uh, these kinds of data. Yeah. Uh, we realized that, uh, of course, we know we, it's quite hard to have this. Uh, uh, we, nowadays, we have some data silos, and we have some uh, people working in, in Madaster, CoBuilder, and uh, that should be connected somewhere to, to deliver the, that common data environment. And also, uh, it's not time to, to reinvent the wheel. We have a lot of databases, and uh, the key uh, element to, to have uh, uh, the digital building logbooks is to connect everything. And uh, of course, we will have some mandatory compliance that will be very uh, important to deliver about some regulations, fire and thermoacoustical uh, compliance you should provide there, and some opinion, not so uh, opinion nowadays uh, concerning lead, uh, bring, and levels. 
our experience with conceptualizing a DBL, but also trying to, uh, to kind of put it into reality is that a legal professional that specifically operates in construction is absolutely essential. Especially when we have certain data issues to resolve uh, regarding, for example, ownership, the scalability and uh, things like that. So it's not, we're talking about all the range of stakeholders, not just contractors, subcontractors and suppliers and clients. We're talking about other entities as well. Of course, a lot of data will come from the products, the construction products, and uh, that is uh, some challenges we will see. We saw here uh, early talk about material passports, and uh, we'll have uh, uh, main challenge to, to connect manufacturings and uh, the sailors and to, to the construction, the designers, and LOIG could be a good uh, tool to, to, to provide the, the height property in the, the right moment. And of course, uh, as I said before, the, the key is to have this digital and interoperable. We will have the IFC, data templates, material passports work together here. And uh, of course, in the construction phase, we have these uh, uh, many uh, um, knowledge areas uh, as uh, risk uh, and scope, uh, cost, and that will be together in, in the digital building logbooks. If you are aware uh, about this uh, Professor Sachs and Relax works that is digital twin construction that is concerned the digital twin in the construction phase, that, that data should be connected with uh, the digital building logbooks as well. And that is the main challenge to deliver the, the, that, uh, that knowledge, that data, that information for uh, concerned the for authorities, for facility management, for digital things, and of course for some mandatory deliverables we will have. Um, just to finish, uh, as uh, the, almost the main talk here was uh, the digital things and the the the, the in use phase, the, the smart building that will be acquiring data as well and providing and connecting this data with the the WAN. and. Not too much. And next, uh, as we talk, uh, we are targeting to continue this uh, research, uh, uh, going dig a little deep in the HDI uh, dimension. Exactly. And as a net note here before we leave you is that uh, there are a lot of systems already regarding data management and APIs interconnecting stuff. So it would seem that a digital building logbook could be redundant just an added layer of complexity in an already extremely complex system. But the whole point is uh, we can have a common concept and a common environment that can actually simplify things instead of uh, making them more complex. But to make this happen, there's a lot of work to be done and there should be a lot of work to be done over the next decade regarding these uh, things. And that's why we are looking at, among other things, um, overarching technologies like blockchain that can help us store everything in a kind of a normalized fashion somewhere that is quite, that works as a layer on top of the normal internet. Uh, yeah, thank you for your attention. Thank you.